Vegas Summer League and all eyes will be on the 19 year olds to see what they can do on the court. Clues Josh Primo is entering second season with the Spurs after a fairly impressive rookie campaign. His stats don't look all that impressive at first, but he started 16 games and nearly averaged double digit points, four rebounds and three assists per game over the final two months of the season. So what did he learn from that experience? I think I've learned that with each and every game, uh, it takes a certain level of focus takes a certain level of preparation um, and if you're not ready to come to play then any any team on any given day can uh, give you the business so uh, just knowing that and coming into each game with the same mindset um, the same kind of intensity I think that's going to help me a lot going into next year. The Spurs will open summer league play against the Cavaliers this Friday at 4 p.m. Astros have been basically untouchable over the last week with six straight wins. And last night they were looking to make it seven against the Royals, trailing 6-3, bottom of the eighth. Kyle Tucker comes through clutch with a base hit in the center. Two runs score, and it's a one-run game. Yuli Gurriel keeps the line moving with a bouncer that sneaks through the infield. Alex Bregman scores. We're all tied at six, six rather, heading, no, it's a completely different number, heading into the bottom of the ninth. Game tied at six, two outs in the ninth. Jordan Alvarez at the plate, and good night. Solo shot to right center as your game winner. Astros complete their largest rally of the season and walk it off with their seventh straight win, seven to six. And did you know that the number six in German is pronounced sex? No. It's true. No, I didn't. It's true. Just covering myself either way. Yeah, you're, you're good to go. Okay, cool. <laughs> Time now, 440 and 78 degrees for now. Still ahead, the summertime means lots of grilling outside. We're running down which grills are best on the market right now. Also up next, a first look at how numerous shark attacks have caused some beaches to close temporarily. And welcome back. It is 443. A Long Island, New York lifeguard who was bitten by a shark during a training exercise is speaking out about the frightening encounter. ABC's Will Reeve has the details in today's GMA First Look. In this morning's GMA First Look, beachgoers are advised to stay vigilant and safe in the ocean after numerous shark attacks have caused some beaches to close temporarily. Smith Point Beach on Long Island temporarily closed Sunday after a lifeguard was bitten during a training exercise. I feel uh, a sharp pain in my hand, and then as I pull my hand in, um, I felt something was still there. While Gallo walked away with minor injuries, Addison Bethay of Florida was attacked by a shark which landed her in the hospital. And then it grabbed me again. I was like, that's not supposed to happen. Like sharks only bite once, not multiple times. Like, that's weird. According to the International Shark Attack file, there were 47 unprovoked shark bites in the U.S. in 2021, with the majority taking place in Florida. And coming up at 7 a.m., we'll have much more on how to enjoy summer at the beach while staying safe from sharks. With your GMA First Look, I'm Will Reeve, ABC News, New York. Summertime for a lot of families means a backyard cookout with the all-American hot dog on the menu. But which hot dog and which grill? Here's 12 on your sides from Marilyn Moritz. Whatever you're cooking up this summer. Packing up my kids and going to our family's lake house and going to have a great barbecue. We're going to a parade. Chances are it includes firing up the grill. So first question is gas or charcoal? If you're going for the classic BBQ vibe, Consumer Reports Paul Hope says charcoal. If you want that smoky barbecue flavor, I always say to go with charcoal. It takes a little longer to set up, but the flavor is well worth it. This 22 inch Weber consistently gets top ratings among kettle grills. It's $219. For more convenience and very good indirect heating, they recommend this $280 Dynaglow. But if you're headed to the beach or park, a portable gas grill travels easily. This one from Coleman got top ratings and needs only a one pound propane tank. The Coleman road trip is $290. So what's on the menu? Nothing says the fourth like hot dogs. Consumer Reports taste testers tried several popular names, plus some meat-free options. It was unanimous. Go for the Nathan's or Hebrew National. If you want a meatless option, there's Beyond Meat Sausages or the Impossible. The meatless bratwurst from Beyond and Impossible were so good that I would actually choose them over most regular hot dogs or bratwursts. For a basic hot hot dog the kids tend to like. Consumer Report says try the Oscar Mayer Uncured Original. The next debate, mustard or ketchup? Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 News.
It's a whole lot to consider at 446 in the morning. I know. Well, you know, it's still tasty. And if you plan it right, you've already had your fill of hot dogs yes, from yesterday. We did yesterday afternoon. Looking at Transguide at I-10 at Woodstone, things are moving at last check. Well, the culinary king in this studio is Mike Ostrich. Mike, what yes. was on the July 4th menu yesterday? Nathan's hot dogs. A oh, well, there you go. Yeah, on the, fantastic. On, yeah, on the grill. And chili. Chili. A little, little bit diced up onions chili and dogs? mustard. Oh, yeah. that's fantastic. Oh, ooh. Oh, that just that's hits good spot. stuff. Yeah. Get them just so they're just about to, you know, real brownish on there and almost getting a little bit of black on them. We did uh -huh. Nathan's as well. Yeah. yeah. For yesterday. Yeah. Fantastic. <laughs> Yep, anyway, all right, um, it was hot when you were grilling yesterday, especially if you didn't have shade. We, uh, we've got some clouds hanging around here this morning, and 82 degrees is the heat index right now out there at the airport. 83 since in Pleasanton, and it feels like 85 at New Braunfels, 83 up around Canyon Lake. And this is add um, anywhere from, say, 17, 20 degrees to these numbers, and that's what it's going to be feeling like later on today. So we will have those heat index readings just a little bit above the actual air temperatures. Clouds are around this morning. We will dip down to 77 degrees and then see uh, the clouds start to break up. The usual, you know, kind of scenarios we've had the past few days. Upper 80s through late morning, 90 at noon. And yep, we're going to do it again. We hit 100 yesterday. That was day number 26. So we'll just continue to uh, rack them up. Now, as far as the uh, humidity, dew point temperatures, of course, we've got this nice flow coming in here out of the southeast, pulling in all that humidity. It does tend to drop down during the day, and I think this computer model is a little bit generous as far as dropping these dew points down to 60. Of course, the past couple of days, we've stayed right around here in town, 63, 64, which doesn't seem like a lot. It is above that that kind of threshold right there of 60. You get below that, you, you are more comfortable, but it is enough to just make it that feel that much hotter when you step outside, because if the humidity was really, really low in the afternoon, and the perfect example is, by the way, it's, it is going to be coming up, obviously, tomorrow morning. The Humidity is really low in the afternoon. Jump in a pool, hop out. You'd actually be on the chilly side because the the moisture would evaporate so easily off your body. But when you have those dew points above 60, it just doesn't happen all that much. So we will have somewhat of a heat index to deal with once again down in the south, southwest. Uh, Catula 109, 105, Carrizo Springs. Got to really be careful. And again, all those numbers are taken in the shade. Another check of the tropics and zilch. Nothing going on out there. Nothing that is even catching the eye of the National Hurricane Center at all. What we are hoping for is at least some little waves, not even anything tropical, but just little disturbances, hopefully, to kind of come in here from the, uh, the Gulf of Mexico. Maybe by uh, the first part or middle part of next week, I should say, but um, that would really be the extent of it as far as any changes, because there's just nothing in the offing to really bring about any uh, changes. And that's going to be the situation all throughout the rest of the week. We'll be in the mid upper 70s. The normal average low is 74 and we're going to be hovering right around. Oh, by the way, the only change is that it is going to get a little hotter. Um, <laughs> Don't know if that's what you wanted to hear. Right. Uh, normal high temperature right now is 94 degrees, so we're still going to be six, seven, eight degrees above normal. Okay. So this is the mental pep talk I give myself this time of year. The next time we will hear fireworks is for New Year's. When it's okay. cold. When it's cooler. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. We'll just put that in our mind. In, in yeah. theory. In, well, it won't <laughs> be 100. Oh, yeah. yeah. It won't right. be like this. Notice I didn't say cold. I said cooler. Cooler. Yeah. Yes. Cooler for sure. Yeah. So we can look forward to that. Yes. All right. Thank you, Mike. 450 right now, 78 degrees. And coming up next, Stranger Things sets a record on Netflix. Here are all your lottery numbers, though. Pick three numbers, 552, Fireball 6, Daily 4, 1670, Fireball 3. Cash 5, 17, 24, 30, 34, 35. Your Texas Tuesday, 8, 14, 27, 33, Bonus Ball 18. Your Powerball number is 15, 16, 24, 31, 56, Powerball 4, Power Play 2. Good luck.
Amber Heard has a request regarding the verdict in her defamation case, plus Stranger Things sets a record. For the latest on what's happening in Hollywood, here's ABC's Chuck Severston. Amber Heard's lawyers have asked a judge to throw out the $10 million verdict against her in the defamation case filed by ex-husband Johnny Depp. Her team is arguing that the verdict was not supported by the evidence and that one of the jurors may not have been properly vetted by the court. No decision yet from the judge. The war is coming. The fourth season of Stranger Things has set a streaming record for Netflix. The show had 7.2 billion minutes of streaming viewers in the U.S. between May 30th and June 5th, after some of the new season's episodes dropped May 27th. That's the highest one-week total since Nielsen began tracking streaming data two years ago. David and Victoria Beckham celebrated their 23rd wedding anniversary with sweet tributes on social media. The Beckhams met in 1997 at the height of their respective fame. David as a soccer star, Victoria as Posh Spice in the Spice Girls. The soccer player and the pop star were married July 4th, 1999 in a lavish ceremony at an Irish castle. The Beckhams are now the parents of four children. As Victoria puts it on her Instagram post, they said it wouldn't last. And celebrating birthdays today, singer Huey Lewis is 72 and soprano star Edie Falco is 59. And that's what's happening in Hollywood. Chuck Sievertson, ABC News. A local man calculates taxes by day and pumps iron by night. Now he's trying to crush the competition hosted by the world's strongest man. 28-year-old Austin Andrade crunches numbers for the county. However, at clock out, he grinds metal. The 6'2 former college football player is seen here, well, somewhere here, lifting 820 pounds in the deadlift. There he is. And there he is, and 420 pounds in each hand. So it was part of his entry audition video into the Shaw Online Classic competition. That competition is hosted by the world's four-time strongest man. I ended up placing first in this qualifier. I scored the highest and got first out of the, pretty much the whole world. I'm always chasing numbers, like I'm trying to get better. So I hit 860 and I was 900. Impressive. The San Antonio native is now training for the Colorado competition in August. He's one of 16 men competing. Whoever wins that gets invited to the World Strongest Man competition next year. He's just walking around like that's nothing. <laughs> I know, yeah. it's pretty insane. Guy's got goals. Yes. And yes. good luck to you, sir. Yes, good luck. Time now, 456 and 78 degrees for now. Still ahead on the morning show, what investigators are now saying about a person of interest following that mass shooting at a 4th of July parade just outside Chicago, Illinois. Plus, Tesla vehicles can now scan the road for potholes. Details ahead in Tech Bytes. Steven's in studio. We'll talk to him coming up. Get an update on the things on the road right now. 90 at Couples. We're expecting light traffic this morning as things get back into a more normal situation. And we head back to work after the long holiday weekend. You're watching GMSA. Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. I'm ABC's M. Wynn in Washington. A person of interest is in custody after a gunman opened fire from a rooftop into a July 4th parade in North Chicago. How the White House is reacting, coming up. And here at home, taking a look outside with a live cam, a little humid this morning again, and expecting things to heat up uh, to the triple digits. Well, unless you're on vacation this week, back to work this morning. Good morning, everybody. It's Tuesday, July 5th. Happy Tuesday. Thanks for joining us. Uh, we survived the heat this weekend, but uh, there's still more to come. Yes, we're settling in for the long haul now. And here's Mike Ostrange with a look at the rest of the week ahead. And I apologize ahead of time. I got a sneeze brewing here, so sorry if I... Look at the light. Look at the light. <laughs> okay, it went away. Anyway, uh, yes, it is very warm, very humid, and it's going to be another scorcher. 79 degrees right now. Take a look at the bottom number. That's the one that makes all the difference. 72 is the dew point, the measure moisture in the atmosphere, and a lot of its moisture is getting pumped in on those southerly winds, 13 miles per hour, and 100 again today, just like yesterday and the day before. Well, I Technically, yesterday we got up to 101, and we'll be right up there in triple digit range again today. The aquifer, yesterday's reading dropped down three tenths of a foot. Of course, I say every day, check with your local municipality as far as any uh, specific watering restrictions. And the allergens, a lot of mold out there, but that has come down. Remember, it peaked on Saturday and has been progressively coming down each and every day. And as the ground continues to dry out from all this heat, speaking of heat, heat index right now feels like 82 at the year 
Airport 83 down around Pleasanton, as well as Canyon Lake and Heat Index 82 in New Braunfels. We're going to still keep somewhat of a heat index around later on today. Warm and humid this morning and then plenty of sunshine. And yep, it is going to be hot triple digits. And really the big problem is we can't completely get rid of the you know, and we go through the afternoon cycle, but there's still some humidity hanging around here, so it puts that heat index a couple of degrees above the actual air temperature. So I think that's what's making it a little more. I don't want to say miserable, but <laughs> a little more miserable the past couple of days, more hundreds the rest of the week and even a bit hotter as we go into the latter part of the week as well as the weekend. Yeehaw. All right, details and maybe um, a slight little change in the forecast or in the uh, overall weather pattern next week. Details in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Steve Cavazos. Morning, sir. How was your fourth? Uh, well, we worked, Mike, so I guess it was okay. Uh, there was not a lot going on, though, thankfully, on the roads yesterday. Today, as Mark was mentioning, we could probably expect a few more folks out there today, but it's not looking too bad at this moment. US 90 Medio Creek, 37 at Jones Avenue. There's I-10 at Woodstone. Again, not a lot of folks out there this early in the morning, but that's expected to change as more folks will probably head back to work today. So let's go ahead and take a look at the map and see what you can expect at this moment. Just lots of green, thankfully, but we got to take it in here over here to the uh, southeast side where we do see a crash that was reported by TxDOT. I-37 in the northbound lanes, uh, but we saw a little bit of a buildup there taking place in the eastbound lanes of 1604. It's not really causing major issues, and unfortunately, there are no trans guide cameras in the area, so we're not able to show you those conditions, but we're going to have to watch that closely. If you are going to be traveling into San Antonio, there is no need to rush. We are just about green across the board here. I 10 coming in those eastbound lanes is 25 minutes at this hour. 27 if you are traveling in from Bolverde and those southbound lanes on 281 and it's a 25 minute drive on I 35 southbound traveling in from New Braunfels to downtown San Antonio. So no worry there, but back here on Transguide quiet start to this Tuesday morning. We'll take a look at things and see how construction could impact your drive time. That'll be coming up a little bit later on. Mark stuff. Thank you, Stephen. Natalie breaking news. Members of a Southside family have their health and safety, but little else after a fire early this morning. It destroyed their home in the 700 block of Kapal off South Florida's Katrina Weber is live at the scene and Katrina. Any idea how this started? Well, no, no word yet. Uh, firefighters and the fire investigators left here about five minutes ago without reaching any real conclusions about how this happened. But uh, there is quite a bit of damage to this home. As you can see behind me, we have members of the family going in and out of the house, trying to salvage whatever they can from uh, the ruins here this morning. This fire broke out about three o'clock this morning. Four people were inside, two adults, two children. They all managed to make it out safely. The fire investigators did take a look around, but again, no exact word on what caused this fire just yet. But the family is safe, just trying to save whatever they can because firefighters say that this home is a complete loss. It is destroyed. Uh, they will not be able to live here again uh, under these current circumstances. But again, fire investigators still trying to figure out how this started this morning. Reporting live on the south side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Katrina, thank you. Over the past few days, in custody death reports have been published in the case of the Uvalde school massacre shooter. The reports were uploaded to the Texas Attorney General website in a records section. Sarah Costa joins us in the studio with more. Good morning, Sarah. Good morning, Steph. Good morning, Mark. And these reports are from the Uvalde Police Department, Uvalde County Sheriff's Office, and Zavala County Sheriff's Office, whom were all called in to assist with this mass shooting. The reports all have similar information except for the summary section. So let's take a look. Uvalde County summary states multiple agencies were involved and are waiting for more information from the pending investigation. Zavala County summary states a Zavala County off-duty deputy assisted with the killing of the shooter inside Robb Elementary and a Uvalde police summary states that none of their officers were part of the fatal shots fired at the shooter causing his death. So to remind you of the shooting timeline, the shooter made it inside the school by 1133 a.m. and three Uvalde police officers entered the school two minutes later. The report also says the director of the Uvalde Police Department has made, quote, a good faith effort to obtain all the facts relevant to the death, end quote. The report goes on to say their department has faced issues trying to get all these facts. Of course, this is an ongoing investigation. To read more about this report, summary, just head to KSAT.com. Stephanie. Thank you, Sarah.
today we are expecting to hear an update from the Bear County Medical Examiner's Office regarding the tragedy on Quintana Road where 53 people died in an 18-wheeler. It's been just over a week since the deadliest human smuggling attempt in our nation's history. The memorial continues to grow with the names of the victims being added onto the crosses as well as pictures of their faces. 19 victims have been conclusively identified and according to Bear County officials, 30 others have been potentially identified. Four victims are unidentified. Sandra Grace Martinez has had the opportunity to learn their stories through their families who come there to grieve at the site seen as their final resting place. So while others are putting walls up between two nations, I'm putting a wall up of crucifixes for the people that come here and sacrifice to have a better life. Guatemala's Ministry of Foreign Affairs released the names of two children who are among the dozens of people killed. They also verified 16 of its citizens are among the dead. In New Braunfels, rescue crew say a man drowned late yesterday on the Guadalupe River. The victim identifies 27-year-old Pablo Rodriguez from Austin. New Braunfels police and fire responded to the river along Green Road for the report of a possible drowning. When they arrived, the man was being pulled from the water after going under for an unknown amount of time. He was taken to Christus Santa Rosa Hospital in New Braunfels, where he was later pronounced dead. Time now, 507 and 78 degrees for now. Still ahead on the morning show, how Tesla is making it easier for cars to avoid potholes in the road. And taking a look outside with live cam, we will heat up to the triple digits to get today, but we are hearing that things will get even warmer towards the weekend. We'll be right back. 511, welcome back. This morning, police in the Chicago suburbs are investigating how and why a gunman opened fire from a rooftop during a 4th of July holiday parade. There are new details on the minutes leading up to the attack and how President Biden is now reacting. ABC's M1 has the latest from Washington. A July 4th celebration turned mass shooting. Now in custody, 22-year-old Robert E. Cremo III, the person of interest identified by police hours after the attack. The FBI and local police now investigating how a gunman opened fire from a rooftop into an Independence Day parade in North Chicago, killing six people, sending at least 31 to the hospital, including 25 with gunshot wounds and a child in critical condition. The victims between 8 and 85 years old. And I just looked back at my dad and right behind him, this girl just fell in, in cold blood um, and just died. Another father was watching his grandson and children march in the parade when shots rang out. These are the kinds of injuries that are seen in war. And these poor kids and families who went to a parade and then, you know, now they... You know, people just don't feel you can go anywhere. This tragedy, along with the more than 300 mass shootings already this year in the U.S., according to the Gun Violence Archive, sparking outrage from politicians once again, calling for tighter gun control. While we celebrate the 4th of July just once a year, mass shootings have become our weekly, yes, weekly American tradition. President Joe Biden reminding Americans that while he has recently signed the first major gun legislation in almost three decades into law, it's still not enough. Nothing guaranteed about our way of life. We have to fight for it, defend it, and earn it by voting. Investigators are waiting on an ATF trace to find out the history of a rifle that was left at the scene. We're told there's still a lot of work left to do to tie the person of interest directly to the shooting. M. Wynn, ABC News, Washington. Now 513, 78 degrees. And still ahead, Apple is revealing new details about its Apple Watch Series 8. And up next, Amazon expand Prime Video's watch party feature to more consoles and platforms. Charmin Ultra Soft has so much cushiony softness, it's hard for your family to remember. They can use less. Sweet pillows of softness. This is soft. Holy Charmin. Oh, excuse me. Roll it back, everybody. Sorry. New Charmin Ultra Soft is now even softer, so you'll want more. But it's so absorbent, you can use less. So it's always worth it. Now, what did we learn about using less? You gotta roll. Everybody, <laughs> we all go. Why not enjoy the go with Charmin? 
fur, you won't phase me. Unlike Zyrtec, Allegra won't make me drowsy. Allegra starts working two times faster than Claritin. So take Allegra before allergy symptoms take over you. And for kids, try allergist recommended non drowsy children's Allegra. Is dad posting a farewell to his favorite college freshman? Nope. He's switching his choice cashback category to gas. The road to college can be emotional, but also rewarding. With the Bank of America customized cash rewards card, you just can't stop getting rewarded. 516 Tesla vehicles can now scan the road for potholes and adjust the suspension to avoid damage. Maybe she's motocrossar Abdi has details in today's Tech Bytes. In today's Tech Bytes, a new software update for Tesla vehicles. It allows the car to scan for potholes and adjust the suspension to avoid damage. It does not work with cars that have the autopilot or self-driving mode software activated. There's also a green light chime to help distracted drivers keep their focus. The upcoming new Apple Watch will reportedly have a larger screen. An analyst says Series 8 will include a version with a screen nearly two inches long diagonally. It's believed there will be two smaller versions as well. The official announcement is expected in September. And Prime Video subscribers can now have different audiences for their watch parties. Amazon has expanded the feature to allow non-Amazon streaming devices, smart TVs, and Xbox consoles. Watch parties are still limited to one 100 Prime subscribers. Those are your Tech Bytes. Have a great day. 517. Let's go ahead and check in with Stephen Cavazos. Yeah, it's been another quiet morning, thankfully, from what we're seeing on Trans Guide, Mark and Steph. Right now, we are seeing 410 at Harry Wurzbach, Loop 410 at Fredericksburg Road. Really seeing, I'll actually hear a lot more folks than what we saw yesterday, but we can expect the roads to be just a, a bit busier because, again, more people are going to be heading back to work and get their errand started maybe a little bit earlier. So just always be on the lookout. We don't see anything really concerning on the map just yet. But if we bring you in there, you may notice at the bottom of your screen, there is a little crash icon icon right over here. It's over there off I-37 northbound at loop 1604. And unfortunately, there are no trans guide cameras in this area, so we can't show you the conditions, but we always want to keep you informed. Something else we want to keep you informed about is work that was taking place over here off I-10 in Kendall County. We know work on the bridge. Uh, the US 87 bridge has been ongoing for quite some time. You drive up I-10, you'll likely encounter a lot of that equipment as well. Uh, but keep in mind, there's actually going to be a traffic shift that started tonight. It started starts tonight, I should say, Perhaps on Friday, July 8th, that's from 9 in the evening to 530 in the morning. Expect various mainline closures in both directions from State Highway 46 to Scenic Loop Road. OK, so roads are empty here, but grab those phones and open your camera app. What you're going to do now is scan this QR code. That's going to take you directly to the KSAT traffic page. I updated the list of the current closures for the month of July. Just remember, tap the center of your screen and then you'll be taken to that page and scroll to the bottom of the screen and you'll find a list there. Guys, thank you, Stephen. Yeah. I like the picture behind you and the caption. Yeah, <laughs> caption kind of says it all. A lot of you know wonderful fireworks uh, displays last night, but yeah, driving home and Mother Nature sure put on her own fireworks show. That's an absolute. Almost some purple in there, Mike. I know. Yeah, yeah. that yeah, these shades right in there. It's yeah. absolutely gorgeous, gorgeous. And one thing to point out there: no clouds showing up either. So we're going to see fewer and fewer clouds, I think, in the afternoons. Now we have our morning clouds hanging around here, but uh, they will continue to you know break up late morning and then plenty of sunshine throughout the afternoon and obviously enough out there to really heat things up. And uh, yeah, these are the numbers that really count the heat index. And it's not a way of just like making it seem hot. It, this is what your your body feels when you're outside because it's it's basically a measure of how efficiently or inefficiently your body can cool itself because there's no place for all the perspiration or moisture in your body to go to when you have too much uh, humidity in the air. So that's why we do have this heat index and what it feels like. So 77, the actual air temperature, that's what we'll drop down to. We're in the upper 70s right now with some morning clouds hanging around and then we will continue to clear on out 90 at noon and then 100 high temperature today. Southeasterly wind 10, 15 miles per hour, enough to continue to pull in some of the moisture. And we're still going to have enough humidity out there to, like I said, keep those heat index readings just a couple of notches above the actual air temperature. So that's why it kind of adds to the uncomfortable feeling or makes it seem hotter and feel hotter than what it is. Satellite picture over the past 12 hours, and as this gets toward the end of the loop, you can sort of see some of these low clouds. It's really hard to see the darker shade of gray blends in with the uh, the background color right there, but um, the low clouds have moved on in here. And a couple of things to point out. All the activity right across the northern portion of the United States, um, all the way from Montana, 
over toward the Great Lakes. Yeah, there's some just to the west of us. And then the second thing is to notice how this is kind of a clockwise rotation right here. All of this is moving up to the north and sliding off to the east. And that's where the high is parked right there just off to the uh, east of us. And that is going to stay put and not move. Now, this is Monday next Monday. Got to jump ahead between now and then nothing goes on morning clouds, afternoon sunshine. But what's interesting is that uh, this long range computer model by Tuesday then does have a couple of showers kind of scattered about the area. We are hoping for a couple of just little disturbances, waves trying to slide on in here from the uh, Gulf of Mexico. So that would give us a chance for uh, a couple of showers, knock temperatures down a few degrees. Not any huge, big, big drop breakers, anything like that, but we'll take anything. 90 at noon, partly cloudy skies, high temperature today up to 100, mostly sunny skies and high temperature today, or excuse me, high temperature in the next couple of days, triple digits and getting hotter. 102s Thursday, Friday in through the weekend and to start off next week. But uh, like I said, the only glimmer of hope as of right now would be in about a week. Mm -hmm. um, slight little disturbances, slight little pattern changes that would knock a few degrees off. And uh, it was funny because I was looking at the long, long range and think, uh -huh. OK, you know, going from, say, 97. Wow, that seems so cool. That's the average hottest time of the year in August. In August, okay. Wow. So we've put the colder air on layaway. We're hoping to pay off our balance in four or five months. Yes, yes. I hope that comes sooner, actually. Yeah, me too, me too. Thank you, Mike. Right now, 523, 78 degrees. Up next in your morning spotlight, Steve Carell talks about his Minions co-star, plus how you can visit a virtual version of the Nope theme park. Lottery numbers this morning. Pick three, five, five, two, fireball six, daily four. 1670 Fireball 3. Cash 5, 17, 24, 30, 34, 35. Your Texas 2 step, 8, 14, 27, 33. Bonus ball 18. And your Powerball numbers, 15, 16, 24, 31, 56. Powerball 4, Power Play 2. Good luck. Minions, The Rise of Gru is the number one movie in America. Steve Carell talks with Rick Damagella about one of his animated co-stars in the Hollywood Minute. I'm not Minnie. Please stop calling me that. Steve Carell got to work with a person very special to him in Minions, The Rise of Gru, Alan Arkin. He's my idol. I've, I think I've worked with him three or four times now, and I just love him. He's one of my favorite people. I... I, my cell phone in my pocket, and I have, I save voicemails from sort of like my parents. I have some voicemails from them when they were still around, and I have like five voicemails from Alan Arkin because I, I love him, and I think he's one of the funniest people in the world. For me, Hollywood is the ultimate dream factory. Downton Abbey, a new era is out now on 4K Ultra HD, Blu-ray and DVD. Among the bonus features are behind the scenes looks at the costumes and the making of the movie within the movie. Are gonna witness an absolute spectacle. Jordan Peele has revealed a website for the theme park from his film, Nope. Jupitersclaim.com features several activities without revealing too much about the mysterious plot of the upcoming movie. Nope hits theaters July 22nd. Noping out in Hollywood, I'm Rick Damagella. It's now 527, 78 degrees. And still ahead on DMSA, it's one of the biggest expansions of U.S. alliances in decades. This morning, the U.S. and other NATO countries are officially signing Finland and Sweden into NATO. What that means for the war between Russia and Ukraine. Yeah, Chick-fil-A is known for its fast drive-through experience. We'll tell you how ordering is about to get even faster. Making headlines, two more countries are set to become the newest NATO allies. We have details coming up. And taking a look outside with live cam, we're starting at 78 degrees, expecting those triple digits again. Yeah, you know how the rest of this story goes, folks. Good morning, everybody. It is Tuesday. It is July 5th. We hope you had a great 4th. Thanks for joining us. Happy Tuesday. I was laughing at what Mike posted earlier. He said, you know, it's heat, but to add insult to injury, the heat will be increasing this weekend. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Look at your face, Mike. Mm. Yep, 
and uh, it's hot. We hit 100 again yesterday. We will hit it again. Uh, yeah, the next few days, like Mark said, you know how this story goes. We are at 79 right now. Dew points at 72, so it kind of goes through its daily cycle. The humidity comes back up. Southerly wind, 13 miles per hour, pulls that in, and that number will drop down somewhat later on this afternoon, but not enough. And that's been the problem later uh, the past couple of days. And again today, heat index right now, 83 Canyon Lake, uh, Pleasanton, 75 Rio Medina, 82 out there at the airport. And we do have a lot of mold in the atmosphere, although it has been dropping down considerably. Uh, Saturday it peaked, Sunday it dropped down a big chunk. Yesterday it continued to drop down and as the moisture in the ground continues to kind of cook out, if you will, bake out of here with this oven that's, that we are in right now, those numbers should continue to drop down. We are going to be up to 100 though later on today and keep chalking up the uh, triple digits. And yes, it is going to get a little bit hotter as we go on into the weekend. Perhaps a minor change way down the road. We'll uh, talk about that in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, what's going on, Stephen? It's a lot, a whole lot over here, Mike. As we get a look at the roadways from Transguide, you just see 37 at Pecan Valley. Maybe one or two folks out there in that direction, but we are starting to see more folks there at 410 at Evers. It is uh, a day that people are going to be getting back to work, so we can expect the commute just to be a little bit busier than what we saw yesterday. But be on the lookout because we do have our first incident reported here in the morning. Loop 410 westbound at Gulebita Road. This is a crash that was reported by TechSot a few minutes ago. We know that there are cameras in the area, so I'll go ahead and give Transget a call. Find out exactly how this will impact anybody's drive time. But right now, looks like we still may be in the green. Just remember, move over, slow down. Those are the rules of the road. And also, stay alert. We're going to take a drive over here to 37 northbound, right there at Southeast Military Drive, where we have some road debris that was also reported by TechSot. This is not causing any issues either, but always stay alert. Keep your eyes on the road and both hands on the wheel. Why look the map? really not showing a whole lot else to talk about just some of those active construction spots and as the morning does roll on we'll continue to keep you updated but back here at Transguide the commute is moving 35 at San Monaco is looking a lot busier than yesterday guys so we'll go ahead and keep thing you guys posted and give you those updates right here on GMSA Mark stuff Thank you, Stephen. This morning we're learning more about a drowning investigation on the Guadalupe River near New Braunfels and a boater on Canyon Lake still has not been found after last being seen going under the water. Sarah Costa joins us live this morning with the very latest. Good morning, Sarah. Good morning, Stephen. Mark, truly a tragic way for these families to spend four to start with that drowning in New Braunfels, where the victim has been identified as 27-year-old Pablo Rodriguez from Austin. So new rescuers in New Braunfels say a man drowned yesterday in the Guadalupe River near New Braunfels. Police and fire responded to the river along Green Road for a possible report of a drowning. When they arrived, a man was being pulled from the water after going under for an unknown amount of time. First responders administered life-saving measures and the man was taken to Krista Santa Rosa Hospital in New Braunfels, where he later died. Police say the preliminary information points to the incident being accidental. A local justice of the peace ordered an autopsy on his body, and the investigation is ongoing. Moving over to Canyon Lake, a family is grieving and waiting for closure after a father went under the water near Boat Ramp 1 Sunday and didn't resurface. Rob Berlinger's sister posted this widely shared photo online asking for volunteers to help look for him. She says her brother was standing on the back of a boat Sunday evening when he picked up his two year old daughter. A wake sent them both tumbling into the water. She says the girl's mother jumped in after them. They were passing the baby back and forth, both of them almost drowning to keep the baby alive. A boat came by help save the baby and Priscilla and when they turned around to try and look for my brother he was already down. So the family expects the worst at this point. Texas Parks and Wildlife says game warden using I he did not respond to questions about the family's request for volunteer help. All right, we're back to us right now because we're having microphone issues with uh, Sarah's microphone. We'll try to get those worked out. Thank you, Sarah. Okay. Well, it could be the biggest expansion of a U.S. alliance in decades. And it could help deter attacks on the U.S. and other member countries. CNN's Amy Kiley reports on what's happening in NATO today. This week, the U.S. is celebrating independence 
and alliances. Sweden and Finland joining NATO is so important. The potential now accession of Sweden and Finland, which will change the alliance uh, forever. Today, the U.S. and its NATO allies signing what are called ascension protocols. Those set up ratification procedures to accept two new member countries. That's a big deal. It sets up possibly the most significant change to the U.S. alliance in decades. Two new NATO allies with formidable military force and capabilities. The timing is important because of Russia's war in Ukraine. I think everyone's very concerned about their the potential for future aggression. Russia has just taken control of much of eastern Ukraine as it continues westward attacks. Russians are shooting over 50 missiles a day, targeting different Ukrainian cities. NATO allies vow to defend each other against foreign attack, so more members means more protection for the U.S. and other member countries. Just yesterday, that strength in numbers was a point of emphasis when a U.S. Army general became NATO's supreme allied commander, Europe. We will march together into a beautiful future of peace and prosperity for all of us. I'm Amy Kiley reporting. God bless you all. Well, tomorrow, President Biden will award the Medal of Honor to four Vietnam veterans, Staff Sergeant Edward N. Kaneshiro, Specialist 5 Dwight W. Birdwell, Specialist 5 Dennis M. Fujii, and retired Major John J. Duffy all served in the Army. Kaneshiro, who will receive his medal posthumously, saved his fellow soldiers by enabling his platoon to withdraw from a village while under attack. Birdwell was wounded in a separate battle, saving his tank commander's life. Specialist 5 Dennis M. Fujii will receive his medal for serving aboard a helicopter ambulance during an evacuation mission. And Major Duffy was wounded twice while battling enemy forces for two days in 1972, refusing evacuation and continuing to fight. It is one of the world's most recognizable landmarks, but the Eiffel Tower is badly in need of repair. The soaring wrought iron structure presiding over Paris now riddled with rust. Instead of repairs, it's getting a more than $60 million cosmetic paint job ahead of the 2024 Olympic Games. Now, it is the tower's 20th time being repainted. The 1,000 plus foot tower was built by Gustave Eiffel in the late 19th century. The Eiffel Tower gets about 6 million visitors a year, so the company is reluctant to close it for a long time for maintenance because of the tourist revenue that would be lost. 538, 78 degrees. And still ahead, how much more you're pay playing to host, or it's actually paying to host summer barbecues for friends and family. And up next, a look at how the Biden administration's plan to com monkey pox, combat it, or combat it rather, monkey pox has uh, spread in the U.S. And taking a look outside with live cam, again, starting in the 70s, which is pretty nice compared to the triple digits we will see later. We'll be right back. The Biden administration will soon offer more access to testing and vaccines for monkeypox. And CNN's Mary Maloney reports health experts say the virus is steadily on the rise in the U.S. More doses of the monkeypox vaccine are being sent to states that are dealing with an influx of the virus. In order to beef up their response and under pressure from the states, the Biden administration is releasing the extra doses of the vaccine from the strategic national stockpile, along with more tests. The current distribution plan has been criticized because of its limited scope, with vaccines only available to those with known exposure. Under the new plan, vaccines and tests will be allocated to states based on case rate, focusing on men who have sex with men and their known partners, along with anyone who thinks they might have been recently exposed through an anonymous partner. The U.S. has confirmed more than 350 cases so far. While experts expect the virus is more widespread than the current case count suggests, they are not calling it crisis yet. I think it would be risky to classify it as low, medium or high. Given the numbers, I would not say right now at this particular point that it is a, quote, high risk. But the numbers may increase, which means we've just got to be careful and pay attention. For today's Health Minute, I'm Mary Maloney. 543, 78 degrees. Coming up next, we're going to tell you about a potentially faster way to order your favorite menu item at Chick-fil-A.
Welcome back. It is 546 in your morning consumer headlines. If you thought you paid more for your July 4th barbecue this year, you would be correct, especially if you had hot dogs. In the four weeks ending on June 12th, the price of a package of hot dogs jumped about 17% compared to last year. That's according to the market research firm IRI. In that same period, ketchup prices spiked 21% and ground beef prices increased 11%. Meanwhile, hamburger and hot dog buns jumped nearly 13 percent. The factors fueling the increase include the war in Ukraine, severe weather and higher gas prices. However, beer has stayed relatively cheap, spiking only about 4 percent. Well, check this out. It's kind of cool. Chick-fil-A testing a way for mobile customers to get their orders more quickly. The fried chicken chain has put in place a new express drive through lanes only for mobile orders at select restaurants. To use them, customers select drive through express on their mobile app, then visit their chosen restaurant. Once there, just use the app to scan the QR code connected to the express lane. An employee will zip the order straight to their vehicle and then you're off. Drive through Express available at approximately 60 participating restaurants nationwide. Chick-fil-A says it may roll out more of these lanes to more locations next year. That would be nice. Mm -hmm. And right now it's 547. Some problems out there at Loop 410 and Culebra Road. Let's go ahead and check in with Stephen Cavazos. Yeah, well, it looks like these lanes of traffic are seeing a pretty big slowdown over here at Loop 410 at Culebra. Let's check out and find out what's going on with our friends at TransGuide. They were able to get us this shot. Uh, got off the phone with them a few minutes ago. Right now, traffic virtually at a standstill. And we're seeing a lot of those flashing lights out there. So not a good sign, especially as we're getting closer to the 6 a.m. hour. We know a lot more people are going to be waking up and they're going to need to get uh, those alternative routes in place. We have one for you in just a moment, but this is off Loop 410 in the westbound lanes of Gulebra Road, and there it is. That stretch of red that we are seeing right now that is building, and that has been building for probably the last few minutes or so, but we're going to have to watch it closely. Quick suggestion, it is still pretty early enough to where you can exit Ingram Road, take a right, and get on a Callahan, and you can avoid that mess if perhaps you're trying to get onto State Highway 151 or US 90. Just continue on that Callahan Road, and uh, you won't find any delays there, but you may find a few stoplights. We're going to continue to look for those alternative routes throughout the morning, but for now, just remember to pack that patience and watch for those first responders. Now, speaking of 410, there is going to be some work taking place tomorrow. Rail work on the west side of San Antonio, Wednesday, July 6th, up until Friday, July 15th, 8 in the evening to 5 in the morning, so we know those crews will be busy for the rest of the week and are up until July 15th, pardon me. A single northbound main lane closure is what you can expect from Culebra Road to West Military Drive. Again, that will be for rail work, and that will be starting tomorrow, July 6th, but should be finishing up on Friday, July 15th. But back here at Transguide, just not looking good. We have a closer view from our friends over there. We're going to have to get a, uh, some information, but for now, just remember to pack that patience, guys. Yes, sir. Thank you, Stephen. Yes, I was going to say, back to grocery prices, the one yes. we've talked about this before, mm -hmm. uh, bacon. Bacon. I bought, I bought some again yesterday. You know that larger pack? Mm -hmm. It's kind of the square. I think it's a pound pack or something. It's like 10 bucks. Yes. Yeah. Wow. Avocados. And some too. good bacon. Yeah. You better enjoy it. No <laughs> kidding. Yeah. It. <laughs> it's like a BLT made with gold leaf. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No Fancy. kidding. So anyway, yeah, back to this picture. This is a great one. Raising so. a glass to our country. Oh. Yes, oh, indeed. 246, 246 birthday yesterday. So yes, the um, ses, or sem, semi quincentennial will be 250. Okay. Quincentennial 500, so the semi-quincentennial is what it's going to be called uh, in four years. We totally trust you on this. We were, we yes. were checking it out yesterday, trying to get the exact, what, whatever you call it. So, <laughs> yes, it will be the semi-quincentennial in four years. Uh, right now, we do have some clouds hanging around here, and 79 degrees is the actual air temperature. Same thing, Pleasanton, 78 New Braunfels, 79 also in Castroville. And then these numbers, uh, you know, it's pretty humid when you step outside, but then, you know, Randolph, Port S.A., and really humid, Canyon Lake, New Braunfels, and then you got that 75 for two points uh, right around Stinson as well as Pleasanton. That is fog up your glasses, steam bath kind of humidity out there. So heat index reading 82 in uh, Pleasanton, 83 right now in Canyon Lake. And those add about 20 to those numbers, and that's what it's going to feel like later on this afternoon. We will fluctuate a couple of notches here and there right around uh, 77 this morning to bottom out at and then a little more sunshine. The morning clouds will continue to break up more sunshine by noon up to 90 already. Same temperature profile as the past couple of days. We are going to make it up to 100 today 
In fact, we did hit 101 yesterday. All right, here's the uh, water vapor imagery. And as you can see, we've got it's kind of this uh, clockwise flow around us. And that's because of the high, which is parked just off to our northeast. And this had moved off to the west. The center of the high pressure was off to the west about a week or so ago. And that's when we got that little front that moved on through here, gave us some rain, and now the high is built back in. And this is just sitting on top of us. It pushes down in the atmosphere, causes the atmosphere to sink, and that's what helps things to heat up, suppresses any sort of uh, any any sort of showers or anything like that. What we're hoping for though, and by the way, this is going to strengthen over the weekend, so that's going to help to heat us up even more, is for that to slide off to the west, the center of that high, and to get more of a flow coming in here off the Gulf of Mexico. And the hope being by Tuesday, Wednesday of next week, we will get one of these easterly waves, as we call it, an inverted trough coming on in here. That would hopefully give us well, some lower temperatures, a chance for some rain, but not for about another week. So again, this is this is really kind of grasping at straws as of right now because, you know, a lot can change between now and then. But at least there's that little bit of hope, but not wait till way down the road. 90 at noon today, partly cloudy skies, high temperature going to hit it again. 100. This will be day number 27. Just in keep in case you are keeping count. Chalk that up and triple digits through the rest of the week. In fact, it's going to be getting hotter. We're looking at 102s to finish up the week and go into the weekend. Ouch. Okay, yeah. uh, keeping you, track. Were you, were you looking up semi quincentennial? No, I was looking up how many days till Christmas because I know you're <laughs> don't say it. anxiously waiting. Uh, don't I won't. Say it. I won't say it. I won't say it. Step 173 days. Yes, I see. Yeah, I didn't say it to you. I said it to her. To me. Yeah, yeah. it's different. I was keeping track. You can smile now, Mike. That grimace. <laughs> 552 to 78 degrees. And coming up next, romance is in the air, but only for those with the right qualifications. We're going to have more about the new romantic comedy, Mr. Malcolm's List. You have a list of qualifications for a bride. Indeed, he does. The season's most eligible bachelor knows what he wants, and when he doesn't find it, he casts the lady aside in search of another in Mr. Malcolm's list. No. Unfortunately for him, one woman has learned of the requirements and plots her revenge. If we present you as the perfect woman, then he discovers he does not meet the requirements on your list. That would be a perfect sort of poetic justice. Traveling back to the Regency era was exciting for the actors who wanted to put their own spin on the time period. I think I just wanted to have fun while doing it and, you know, get the dialect right, get the mannerisms right, get the chemistry right. You're being blinded by his intelligent conversation and devastatingly handsome good looks. As well as being brooding and mysterious, I think there was just a real human inside there that I was so fascinated to unpick and explore and empathize with. The plot borrows heavily from classic literature, such as Jane Austen novels, but with a modern twist. What is interesting about the the project was it felt it's familiar, but there was enough different about it that it was interesting. Yeah, I agree. I agree. It's the it's the rom com meets Regency romance that I think um, exactly as Theo said helps you access the more contemporary elements of the script and kind of really bring those out wherever you can, depending on, on where your character's at. I promise you will be well entertained. In Hollywood, I'm Alicia Stanford. Right now it is 5.57. Coming up the next hour at GMSA, it's been just over a week since the deadliest human smuggling attempt in our nation's history. We'll tell you what update we can expect later today from the Bear County Medical Examiner's Office. Trans guide right now, here's one of our big problem spots, 410 at Culebra. See a bunch of flashing lights out there. Right now in one direction is affected. We will check in with Stephen Cavazos coming up. Hope you had a fantastic 4th of July, waking up on the 5th. And yes, it is going to be another hot one. Live from KSAT 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts 
right now. I hope you got some sleep. Those fireworks were going late last night. Good morning, everybody. It is Tuesday, July 5th. And thanks for joining us. And yes, it's been hot in the afternoons. Um, at least I want to talk about Sunday evening. That seemed nice with a slight breeze. I'm hoping for any kind of relief at this point. We can hope. And Mike's here to tell us how hot we got for the 4th. 101. Okay. And at least there was somewhat of a breeze yesterday, too. Yeah. But uh, as I was quoting you all day yesterday, it seems like those breezes are just like a, a, a hair dryer. Hair dryer, so. yeah. Yeah. And um, it's going to be hot again today. If we could just kind of you know, get rid of a little more humidity in the afternoon. It still hangs in there. And so, you know, because if you had very, very dry air, if you're in the shade, it would be more tolerable, but we've kept a slight bit of humidity. You know, we go through that that 24 hour cycle, but it doesn't really get completely out of the uh, out of the atmosphere. 83 degrees is the heat index right now at uh, Canyon Lake, 82 Pleasanton. Same thing at the airport, Castroville, 82 and add roughly 20 to those numbers. And that's what it's going to feel like later on this afternoon. We are going for a high temperature today of 100 mold is on the high side, but it did come down a whole bunch from the previous days reading. Of course, it had peaked on Saturday. So we'll uh, fluctuate. We're at 79 right now. We'll fluctuate a couple of degrees this morning. Drop down to 77. Some clouds hanging around here. More sunshine. We get up to 90 today at noon. And then, yep, a high temperature today. We are going to be up to, you guessed it, 100 degrees. And add a couple of notches to that. Not only is how it feels today, but the actual thermometer reading as we go in toward the weekend. All those details and maybe a little bit of light at the end of the tunnel way down at the end of the tunnel. I'll talk about that in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority got some big problems out there, right? Yeah, and not a way we want to start any morning, Mike. Unfortunately, here at 410 at Gulebra, we still have that crash that was reported by text out a little bit earlier. Want to actually step out of the screen and just give you a look at the commute at this point. Doesn't really look like it's improved much. Unfortunately, we don't have any details at this point, but we hope that the driver is okay. We hope that everybody, anybody that's involved in this situation is doing all right, but we know that traffic is definitely experiencing a problem at this hour, especially with more people heading back to work. So keep that in mind. But we are looking at alternative routes. We'll first start here at the map 410 West at Gulebra Road. That is where we see that slowdown that is taking place. Now a suggestion here, if you it's still pretty early to exit Ingram Road and to get uh, take a ride on to Callahan Road. If you're trying to hit State Highway 151, you really just have to stay on Callahan and you won't have any trouble there. If you hit 90, uh, just continue on Callahan. But keep in mind, you'll encounter a few stoplights, but better than those flashing lights along the highway. So we'll ha have to watch that area closely, but it's not looking good at this point. If your travels are taking you into the Alamo City, we have those travel times for you right now. Still pretty green from Seguin with 28 minutes on those westbound lanes at this point. 33 if you're traveling on 87 northbound coming in from Lavernia and about a 28 minute drive time heading up from Floatisville. But we're going to bring you back here to Transguide, give you a look here at 410 Equilebra. Gosh, just not looking any better, but we are hoping for a better update as the morning does go on. Mark Stuff. Thank you, Stephen. New this morning, four members of a Southside home have their health and safety, but little else after a fire destroyed their house early this morning. This happened in the 700 block of Kaplau in the neighborhood between South Flores and Pleasanton Road. Firefighters say that it started just after three this morning, quickly taking over the entire house. Everyone got out safely. The home, though, is a complete loss. The cause of the fire is still under investigation. It has been just over a week since the deadliest human smuggling attempt in our nation's history. Today, we are expecting to hear an update from the Bear County Medical Examiner's Office. Sarah Costa joins us live. Sarah. Good morning, Steph. Good morning, Mark. The memorial along Quintana Road, where 53 people died, and an 18-wheeler continues to grow with the names of victims being added onto crosses, as well as pictures of their faces. Several tents have been set up in the area with free water and Gatorade, as well as a place to make donations for supplies. 19 victims have been conclusively identified, according to the Bear County Medical Examiner. 30 others have been potentially identified Four victims are still not identified. Now, Sandra Grace Martinez has had the opportunity to learn their stories through their family members who have come to grieve this site since seen as their final resting place. So while others are putting walls up between two nations, I'm putting a wall up of crucifixes for the people that come here and sacrifice to have a better life. Guatemala's Ministry of Foreign Affairs released the names of two children who were among the dozens of people killed. They also verified 16 of its citizens 
are among the dead migrants. The Bear County Medical Examiner's Office is expected to hopefully release more identities of these victims later today. Mark and Steph. Thank you, Sarah. 605 right now this morning, police in the suburbs of Chicago are investigating how and why a gunman opened fire from a rooftop into a July 4th holiday parade. Now there are new details on the minutes leading up to the attack and how President Biden is now reacting. ABC's M. Wynn is tracking the latest this morning. A July 4th celebration turned mass shooting. Now in custody, 22-year-old Robert E. Cremo III, the person of interest identified by police hours after the attack. The FBI and local police now investigating how a gunman opened fire from a rooftop into an Independence Day parade in North Chicago, killing six people, sending at least 31 to the hospital, including 25 with gunshot wounds and a child in critical condition. The victims between 8 and 85 years old. And I just looked back at my dad and right behind him, this girl just fell in, in cold blood um, and just died. Another father was watching his grandson and children march in the parade when shots rang out. These are the kinds of injuries that are seen in war. And these poor kids and families who went to a parade and then, you know, now they... You know, people just don't feel you can go anywhere. This tragedy, along with the more than 300 mass shootings already this year in the U.S., according to the Gun Violence Archive, sparking outrage from politicians once again, calling for tighter gun control. While we celebrate the 4th of July just once a year, mass shootings have become our weekly, yes, weekly American tradition. President Joe Biden reminding Americans that while he has recently signed the first major gun legislation in almost three decades into law, it's still not enough. Nothing guaranteed about our way of life. We have to fight for it, defend it, and earn it by voting. Investigators are waiting on an ATF trace to find out the history of a rifle that was left at the scene. We're told there's still a lot of work left to do to tie the person of interest directly to the shooting. M. Wynn, ABC News, Washington. Well, today the U.S. and its NATO allies are signing what are called accession protocols. Those set up ratification procedures to accept two new member countries, Finland and Sweden. It's one of the most significant changes to the U.S. alliance in decades. The timing, very important because of Russia's war in Ukraine. Russia has just taken control of much of eastern Ukraine as it continues westward attacks. Sweden is already signaling it welcomed further additions to NATO, such as Ukraine. And over the weekend, China's first typhoon of the year brought heavy rain and wind to several southern provinces already waterlogged from weeks of torrential rains and thunderstorms. Heavy rain is expected to hit central and southern China over the next few days as the expansive rain belts of a weakening typhoon sweep inland from the country's southern coastline. China is historically prone to flooding, triggering landslides and swamping many acres of farmland. Back here at home, 608, 78 degrees. And still to come, we'll look at some of the stories trending right now on KSET.com. Plus, Tesla working to help you avoid the damage caused by potholes. After the break, we'll show you how. And the heat continues in our area, but we are starting off at 78 degrees. So this is a time to run your errands if you can. We'll be right back. Six twelve. A new software update allows Tesla vehicles to scan for potholes and adjust the vehicle's suspension to help avoid damage. It doesn't work with cars that have autopilot or the self-driving mode activated. There's also a green light chime to help distracted drivers focus. Hmm, I wonder if it's like the chime of your cell phone, like ding. Or something <laughs> or a little bit more, more. <laughs> to get your attention. Right, totally. That might work too. Six twelve. Right now. Let's go ahead and check back with Stephen Cavasso. Still a mess out there at Loop 410 and Culebra Road. Yeah, drivers definitely need to keep their attention here at 410 at Culebra. Not looking any better. I'm just going to go ahead and give you a shot there. It just looks like traffic. Now that more folks are getting out there, we are starting to see more of a buildup, and that is expected anytime there is a situation, especially as we're getting closer and closer to morning rush hour. So not a good place to be at this point, but we have your back. We're going to look for some alternative routes in just a minute, but be on the lookout. That's at Loop 410 West. 
that's in the southbound lanes of Guilebra Road, where we see that buildup that is continuing to take place, an area we are going to watch closely. So quick suggestion, though, if you're trying to head up to uh, State Highway 151, perhaps uh, the westbound lanes, uh, you may want to just exit Ingram Road and then get onto Petranka Road and continue on this to uh, that road till you hit State Highway 151. You'll hit the westbound lanes there and really we will just encounter a few of those stoplights. But as a reminder, if you're trying to get into the eastbound lanes of 151 or perhaps US 90, exit Ingram Road and take a right at Callahan and continue just a little bit further down. And that's where you'll hit those eastbound lanes and a little bit further down, you'll hit US 90. But overall, this is going to be a big problem right now. If we continue to see these flashing lights, there's plenty of them. But make sure you keep your focus on the roadways and watch out for those first responders, guys. Thank you, Stephen. Yeah. Thank you, Mike. I know yes. no way around those triple digits. <laughs> no, unfortunately, uh, perhaps some some subtle changes coming in here by not next time or about this time next week, I should say. But until then, it's just going to remain very, very hot. We're at 79 right now. The average low temperature is 74, so we're still five above that. I think we'll knock down a couple of notches when it's all said and done. Dew points at 72, which means there's a bunch of moisture out there still. And that's the usual cycle that we go through. The humidity is higher in the morning and drops somewhat in the afternoon, but it's not really dropping down below 60 degrees. That's that uh, kind of threshold number where it's a little more pleasant outside, so we're still keeping some humidity around in the afternoons. Look back to last night, and boy, a lot of beautiful fireworks displays. Beautiful night to watch fireworks. We did have a fairly nice breeze out there, uh, which kind of helped things out somewhat. And right now, this is uh, looking up I-10 in toward the medical center, and you can see we still have plenty of our morning clouds hanging around here. And yes, we did hit 26 yesterday, and we're going to continue to chalk up these numbers uh, add to the 100 degree days it, with at least throughout the next seven days. Of course, back in 2009, what's interesting is this was just two years after we did not hit 100 in 2007. It was that very, very wet year. And then every other year after that, or every two years after that, we uh, almost hit those records. So the top three are within just four years of each other right there. 79 degrees out there at the airport, Port SA 77, 78 at Canyon Lake. And again, the humidity remains pretty high, especially Seguin, Stinson, Pleasanton. When you get up about 74, 73, 74, again, that's where it is fog up your glasses, sort of a humidity and heat index readings basically add 20 or more to these numbers. And that's what it is going to be feeling like later on today. 79. Once again, at 8 o'clock, like I said, we'll drop down to 77 degrees and go up through the 80s, 90 at noon. And yes, we will hit 100 again today with plenty of sunshine out there. Wind out of the south, southeast, 10, maybe 15 miles per hour. Again, water vapor. We've got a lot of activity off there to the northwest, but still this clockwise rotation right here. And what we're looking at is this high, which is sitting right on top of us. And this is the thing that is not moving. It's been almost in the same spot for the past basically couple of months, ever since we started racking up the triple digits back in May. Um, it has kind of fluctuated a little bit here and there when we had some of that rain a couple of weeks ago, it had moved off to the west. So hopefully by the first part of next week, the center of that high starts to slide off to the west. We get a little bit of a uh, northwesterly flow here. And then also what we're hoping for, too, is that we get some of these waves coming in here, these little inverted troughs coming in from the Gulf of Mexico. So that would be something that would hopefully stir stir things up and give us a chance for some rain and perhaps slightly lower temperatures by the uh, first and middle part of next week. But until then, no changes in sight. 90 at noon, partly cloudy skies. High temperatures are going to make it up to 100 today, mostly sunny skies. And then we will have triple digits all the rest of the week. In fact, things are going to be heating up a little bit. We did hit 101 yesterday, by the way. Uh, 102s we're looking at are even in some cases hotter than that. And yeah, once the, you know, as the the ground continues to dry out and mm -hmm. we don't have quite as much leftover humidity in the afternoon. It does drop down, but it's just enough out there to really kind of, you know, add to that. You can't even get that comfortable in the shade. Mm. Oh boy, they call it the dog days of summer and we're finally there. Yes.
Yes. Cupping it out in the summer. Whole kennel full of these dog days. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Thank you, Mike. 617, about 78 degrees. And after the break, a New York lifeguard bitten by a shark speaking out about the frightening encounter. That's next in your GMA first look. And here's a look at the latest from Hollywood. Amber Heard's lawyers have asked a judge to throw out the $10 million verdict against her in the defamation case filed by ex-husband Johnny Depp. Her team is arguing that the verdict was not supported by the evidence and that one of the jurors may not have been properly vetted by the court. No decision yet from the judge. The war is coming. The fourth season of Stranger Things has set a streaming record for Netflix. The show had 7.2 billion minutes of streaming viewers in the U.S. between May 30th and June 5th, after some of the new season's episodes dropped May 27th. That's the highest one-week total since Nielsen began tracking streaming data two years ago. David and Victoria Beckham celebrated their 23rd wedding anniversary with sweet tributes on social media. The Beckhams met in 1997 at the height of their respective fame. David as a soccer star, Victoria as Posh Spice in the Spice Girls. The soccer player and the pop star were married July 4th, 1999 in a lavish ceremony at an Irish castle. The Beckhams are now the parents of four children. As Victoria puts it on her Instagram post, they said it wouldn't last. And celebrating birthdays today, singer Huey Lewis is 72 and soprano star Edie Falco is 59. And that's what's happening in Hollywood. Chuck Sievertson, ABC News. My A1C stayed here. It needed to be here. Ruby's A1C is down with Rebelsis. My A1C wasn't at goal. Now I'm down with Rebelsis. Mom's A1C is down with Rebelsis. Study once daily Rebelsis significantly lowered A1C better than a leading branded pill. Rebelsis isn't for people with type 1 diabetes. Don't take Rebelsis if you or your family ever had medullary thyroid cancer or have multiple endocrine neoplasia syndrome type 2 or if allergic to it. Stop Rebelsis and get medical help right away if you get a lump or swelling in your neck, severe stomach pain, or an allergic reaction. Serious side effects may include pancreatitis. Tell your provider about vision problems or changes. Taking Rebelsis with a sulfonylurea or insulin increases low blood sugar risk. Side effects like nausea, vomiting, and diarrhea may lead to dehydration, which may work and kidney problems. Need to get your A1C down? A1C down with Ask your health care provider about Rebelsis today. In this morning's GMA First Look, beachgoers are advised to stay vigilant and safe in the ocean after numerous shark attacks have caused some beaches to close temporarily. Smith Point Beach on Long Island temporarily closed Sunday after a lifeguard was bitten during a training exercise. I feel uh, a sharp pain in my hand. And then as I pulled my hand in, um, I felt something was still there. While Gallo walked away with minor injuries, Addison Bethay of Florida was attacked by a shark, which landed her in the hospital. And then it grabbed me again. I was like, that's not supposed to happen. But like sharks only about once, not multiple times. Like, that's weird. According to the International Shark Attack file, there were 47 unprovoked shark bites in the U.S. in 2021, with the majority taking place in Florida. And coming up at 7 a.m., we'll have much more on how to enjoy summer at the beach while staying safe from sharks. With your GMA First Look, I'm Will Reeve, ABC News, New York. And trending now on KSET.com, traditional embroideries and floral paintings are paying homage to Ukraine and Paris. It all kicked off yesterday, and the images are part of a four-day couture week. A Ukrainian artist designed the set, and the collection is meant to be a message of support for the people of Ukraine. Chick-fil-A wins again for the eighth year in a row. The fried chicken chain topped the new customer satisfaction study. They got a score of 83, same score as last year. On the low side, McDonald's fried their ratings with a low score of 68. The study is based on thousands of customer reviews. And last night, fireworks lit up the night sky. There were big displays around San Antonio and the surrounding areas. So this was a scene at Leon Valley at Raymond Rimkus Park. A lot of people came out for that celebration out there. And here's a look at the 4th of July Jubilee in shirts yesterday. Celebration started with a 5K and parade followed by the carnival at Tulemeyer Park. They also had live music and a fireworks display last night.
And yesterday on Coney Island, Joey Chestnut claimed his 15th career title at Nathan's famous hot dog eating contest. This might have been his most difficult title defense. Chestnut was wearing a surgical boot on his right leg, and he was even interrupted by a protester. 17 dogs in, but he wasn't phased, throwing the protester aside as he continued munching towards glory. <laughs> Just a down 63 hot dogs and buns, not a record, but it was more than enough to claim his seventh straight championship. It hurts, but uh, I, was, I was in the dome pretty good for a little bit and I was ignoring it and uh, I slowed down, but it, it, was, uh, it was a crazy contest. Uh, I'm happy I was able to, able to come through on top. Oh my goodness, after missing last year's competition due to pregnancy, Miko Sudo returned to the women's competition and won her eighth career title by eating 40 hot dogs. Between the two of them, that's over 100 hot dogs. Over, and there's a method to the madness there. Oh my goodness. Yeah, and it's, comp it's competition. I mean, it's on, it was on ESPN. I mean, so it's, it's like a sport. It's a sport. <laughs> it's a sport. Indigestion, also a sport. Yes. 625, about 78 degrees. And ahead in our next half hour, several fires around town overnight. Katrina Weber is standing by with the latest, uh, one of the big ones. Hey, good morning. It is 629 and we are looking outside with live cam right now. We are starting at 78 degrees and as you can see in your screen, we can expect another hot one. Hope you had a great holiday weekend. Welcome back. It is Tuesday, July 5th. Back to work. That's right. Happy Tuesday. Thanks for joining us. Uh, just prepare for the heat. It's kind of the way things are going to go. This, this is where we kind of settle in for the long haul, meaning the entire month of July, mm -hmm. August and September. Let's hope it doesn't go into September. Yeah, mm -hmm. but we have had years 2005, I think. What happened was in 2005? In, <laughs> was that infamous September where uh, it was like the third week, I think, of September and we were up in the 105 degree range. Oh, my goodness. Oh, wow. Yeah, remember that okay. one. So let's not repeat sorry. that. No. <laughs> makes makes today's hundred not seem so bad, doesn't it? So uh, anyway, there's our morning clouds hanging around the area, and uh, we'll see a lot more sunshine later on today. Warm and humid to step outside. Upper 70s. We're right now five degrees above normal. 72 is the dew point, which yeah, it's going through the 24-hour cycle where more humidity in the morning. Southerly wind, 10 miles per hour. Heat index reading right now. Yep, got to add a couple of notches to the actual air temperature. 83 is what what it feels like up the road in Canyon Lake. Mold is on the high side, but it has con continued to come down from its peak on Saturday and the updated count is going to be coming out in about uh, 45 minutes hour or so. And throughout the rest of today, after a warm, humid morning, we are going to be up to 100 again today. It is going to be a hot one, plenty of sunshine, and we'll still have a little bit of leftover humidity. So even if you're in the shade, it's really not that comfortable. And then the rest of the week, more triple digits. As a matter of fact, add a couple of degrees here and there every single day going into the uh, the weekend. And yeah, it's going to be a bit hotter. We're looking at low hundreds around here, perhaps a glimmer of hope way down the road. We'll talk about that coming up in a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Stephen, what's going on? Still the big problems? Yeah, well, you know, we always tend to see the half hour of the show be the busiest in terms of traffic. 410 at Harry Wurzbach doesn't look too bad there. And as we get a quick look around town, we know we have an incident over our West Loop 16 or West Loop 410. Pardon me of 281 at Jones Maltzberger, though. Back here in town, things aren't looking too bad, but be on the lookout because a big problem again of the morning is going to be right over here. 410 at Gulebner Road, where we see plenty Plenty of flashing lights, slow moving traffic as well. So not a good place to be at this hour, especially with more people heading back to work. So let's go ahead and take a look at the map and see what you can expect at this point, because we know that's in the southbound lanes of 410, not far from Gulebeter Road. We are seeing that build up. It's pretty much stayed consistent throughout the morning. But if you are traveling to work and maybe you want to look for an alternative route, here is a quick suggestion. If you want to travel into the westbound lanes of State Highway 151, exit Ingram Road, then you're going to take a left at Petrenko Road and continue on until you hit that that area state highway 151 but keep in mind flashing lights uh, you'll probably see some of those stoplights out there but it beats those flashing lights trying to get into the westbound lanes of 151 or perhaps us 90 exit 
Ingram Road and get onto Callahan. I have it highlighted there for you in blue. Continue further onto Callahan Road until you hit 151 or you hit US 90. But it is going to take a little while before we see this cleared up. But if you're going to be traveling in, we're really not going to see any slowdowns just yet. 28 minutes on I-37 coming in those northbound lanes with a pleasant drive. About half an hour on Highway 90 in the eastbound lanes coming in from Castorville. And your arrival from Lido looks pretty normal with 16 minutes at this hour. But the big issue back here at Trans Guide 410 at Kulabda. We'll watch it closely and hopefully before the show wraps, we'll have a better update. Guys. Thank you, Stephen. Someone's 4th of July celebration has led to a July 5th headache for two families. San Antonio fire investigators say their troubles are due to fireworks and it started as a fire that heavily damaged two homes on a street called Wildstone Place on Bandera Road and Loop 1604. Katrina Weber has a live report from the scene and Katrina did everyone get out safely. Well, good morning, Stephanie. Yes, both families made it out safely. Their homes, though, not safe. Uh, they have some pretty heavy damage, as you can see here. Uh, it looks like the house with the darker brick has the most extensive damage. Uh, both of those are very close by. Firefighters have been out here all night putting water on this and making sure that this fire doesn't spark up again. Uh, the fire originally broke out around 1130 last night, quickly spread from one home to another. Uh, the families were able to get out and escape. Firefighters, though, had some uh, some trouble because of the narrow street here. They say there were a lot of cars parked on the street and they had trouble accessing this. Uh, they did manage to put out those fires, but again, making sure that they don't spark up again. And uh, the chief was out here last night, Chief Charles Hood. He says that he believes that this was started by fireworks. And in fact, he says there were fireworks going off in the area as they were out here working. Now, those fireworks have been a problem for firefighters because they also had another fire not too far from here in the Government Canyon natural area. There was a pretty extensive brush fire there. More than 30 acres burned, and firefighters also had to deal with that uh, last night. And again, they are blaming both of these fires on fireworks. Reporting live on the far northwest side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Katrina. Over the past few days, in custody death reports have been published in the case of the Uvalde school massacre shooter. The reports were uploaded to the Texas Attorney General website in a record section. Our Sarah Costa joins us in the studio with more. Good morning, Sarah. Good morning, Steph. Good morning, Mark. Those reports are from the Uvalde Police Department, Uvalde County Sheriff's Office, and Zavala, Zavala County Sheriff's Office, whom were called in to assist with this mass shooting. The reports all have similar information except for the summary section, so let's go over it. Uvalde's county's summary states multiple agencies were involved and are waiting for more information from the pending investigation. Zavala County summary states a Zavala County off-duty deputy assisted with the killing of the shooter inside Robb Elementary. And Evaldi police summary states none of their officers were part of the fatal shots fired at the shooter causing his death. To remind you of the shooting timeline, the shooter made it inside the school by 11.33 a.m. and three Uvalde police officers entered the school two minutes later. The report also says the director of the Uvalde Police Department has made, quote, a good faith effort to obtain all the facts relevant to this death, end quote. And the report goes on to say their department has faced issues trying to get all the facts. Of course, this is an ongoing investigation. To read more on this report, just head to our website at ksat.com. Mark. Thank you, Sarah. 636 right now. New this morning, San Antonio police say two women are in critical condition after they were shot overnight. We're also told a man was shot and taken to a hospital by a suspect in a silver sedan. Police say it happened around 2.30 in the 7700 block of Ingram Road near Culebra on the west side. SAPD says the shooting happened at an apartment that one of the women was shot two times in the back. The other was shot once in the chest, once in the abdomen, and once in the arm. Right now, police don't know what led up to the shooting. And we are learning more about a drowning investigation on the Guadalupe River. The victim is identified as 27-year-old Pablo Rodriguez from Austin. New Braunfels police and fire responded to the river along Green Road for a report of a possible drowning. When they got there, a man was being pulled from the water after going under for an unknown amount of time. He was taken to Christus Santa Rosa Hospital in New Braunfels, where he was later pronounced dead. 
Meanwhile, over at Canyon Lake, officials are still looking for Rob Berlingeri, who was last seen yesterday jumping in the lake to save his toddler from drowning. Berlingeri's sister told KSAT the two-year-old was hit by a wake and fell into the water from the boat. Others on board did not realize what happened except the toddler's mother, who also jumped in. The toddler and mother made it out safely, the family calling Berlingeri a hero, and hope rescue crews will find his body soon. Another big story we are following this morning. A person of interest is being questioned by investigators in Highland Park, Illinois, after that mass shooting at a 4th of July parade. Now, police say that 22 Robert E. Cremo III is now in custody and is accused in the mass shooting that left six dead, dozens injured. Law enforcement sources say they're examining social media posts as part of their ongoing investigation into the shooting. So far, they will only say some of the posts depict graphic images and violent behavior. At the White House yesterday, President Biden held a moment of silence for the victims. Look for the latest on this story coming up in Good Morning America in less than a half an hour at 7 o'clock. Could be the biggest expansion of a key U.S. alliance in decades. And it could help deter attacks on the U.S. and other member countries. CNN's Amy Kiley reports on what's happening in NATO today. This week, the U.S. is celebrating independence and alliances. Sweden and Finland joining NATO is so important. The potential now accession of Sweden and Finland, which will change the alliance uh, forever. Today, the U.S. and its NATO allies signing what are called ascension protocols. Those set up ratification procedures to accept two new member countries. That's a big deal. It sets up possibly the most significant change to the U.S. alliance in decades. Two new NATO allies with formidable military force and capabilities. The timing is important because of Russia's war in Ukraine. I think everyone's very concerned about their the potential for future aggression. Russia has just taken control of much of eastern Ukraine as it continues westward attacks. Russians are shooting over 50 missiles a day, targeting different Ukrainian cities. NATO allies vow to defend each other against foreign attack, so more members means more protection for the U.S. and other member countries. Just yesterday, that strength in numbers was a point of emphasis when a U.S. Army general became NATO's supreme allied commander, Europe. We will march together into a beautiful future of peace and prosperity for all of us. I'm Amy Kiley reporting. God bless you. It's now 639 on your Tuesday morning. And baby in your future after the break, how to make sure your nursery is ready to go. 643, setting up nurseries can be difficult for both new and experienced parents. In this morning's Ask Angie segment, we are talking about some easy, impactful projects that will help you design an organized, safe space for your little one. Sarah Costa joins us with some of those helpful pointers. Good morning. I just want to preference, guys, that I don't have children, and nor am I anywhere near having children. These all come from our good friend Angie. Okay. But I hope our photographer Azian is listening. His wife is going to give birth, like, any day. So, Azian, this one's for you. Because we know that parents spend a lot of time in their child's nursery. It's important that both the parents and child enjoy this space. So decorating your nursery can be the most exciting part of the process. And a great place to start is with painting. So you can get creative and choose at as many colors as you want. But if you are looking for gender neutral colors, I know that's a big thing now. Thing about, think about yellow, light gray, and white. These are for the parents who don't want to know the gender of their child until, surprise, they're here. Also keep safety in mind. As babies grow up, they start crawling and standing, so clutter can be a problem. A lot of the mess can come from clothes or toys. Your baby outgrows. Stepping on toys can be an ouchie in the middle of the night, too. So you want to stay organized with a bin system. Just remember to label them so you don't lose track of anything. Lastly, experts say lighting is one of the most important aspects of a nursery. Natural light can disrupt your baby's sleep, so you may want to install window treatments such as blackout curtains or shades, which come in a wide range of colors to match whatever aesthetic you've selected for the room. You can also swap out your traditional light bulbs for LED bulbs, which are less harsh on the baby's eyes. 
So you can also install dimmers and night lights, which can create a calming bedtime and morning routine. I need some of those. So your baby will spend a lot of time in this nursery. If you're having trouble decorating, talk to a pro to make sure your baby is safe and happy for many years. Mark and Steph? Yeah, he, uh, Azian is on baby watch now. I know. He says his wife has an appointment today, so... We'll see. Best of luck. New member to GMSA. Yeah, that's right. right. <laughs> Our fam is about to get a little bigger. Thank you, Sarah. Thank Thanks, you very guys. much, Sarah. 645, 78 degrees on your Tuesday. Feels like a Monday, but it's a Tuesday. It's a Tuesday. <laughs> well, mm -hmm. it's, it's our Monday, but let's check on that Tuesday traffic. Well, it's your Monday. Mike and I were here yesterday, uh -huh. so but we were here with Purpose <laughs> and Sarah. So, But uh, have a better update here. Thankfully, 410 Equilibra Road, now just as we're entering that morning rush hour, that crash that has been causing problems and plaguing drivers with slowdowns looks like it's finally cleared. So some better news here. Still somewhat of a slowdown though, as we see right there on our map, but we're actually going to start here at 281 northbound, not far from loop 1604, where we have another crash picked up. Going to have to give our friend at Trans Guide a call to see if we can get a view of this area. Some of the cameras up there, uh, there's not as many as we see elsewhere, so maybe we can get a shot, but right now just keep your eyes on the road for, and make sure you stay focused. Taking you back over here, again, that crash looks like it just cleared off loop 410 here on the west side of San Antonio. The southbound lanes really saw a significant slowdown for quite a while, but that Trans Guide camera showing us a better view. So it looks like that is cleared out, but we're still seeing just a slight delay there. Getting a wide look at the map of the metro area at this time. We know we have a lot of active construction spots. We'll continue to keep you updated, of course, throughout the day on air and online. But back here, 410 at Culebra, looks like our friends at Transguide turned the camera around to give us a better view. Things are smooth sailing at this point, guys. Thank you, Stephen. Oh, that's cool. I love that picture. That's just great. Happy fourth from Steel. <laughs> Steel, Aww. love the dog's name. Oh, I know. And yeah. Just looking up there at the stars and stripes. Thank Almost you. Almost like he's saluting. I know. Yeah. 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 Ten. Hoot. That's wonderful. <laughs> Thank you very much for the KSAC Connect picture. Still got some clouds hanging around here this morning. Uh, we'll obviously see more sunshine as the uh, the morning rolls on and temperatures will drop to 77. Still three degrees above normal and then a lot more sunshine, of course, throughout the course of the morning and we'll make it up to 90 at noon and blazing sunshine out there. 100 high temperature wind out of the south to the southeast about 10 15 miles per hour. And again, I, I Love the quote from Mark. It feels like a hair dryer out there. Also, one of the problems that we've been seeing the past couple of days, usually we go through the and we have been going through the daily cycle. More humidity in the morning, less in the afternoon, but it's not really dropping on down. Earlier, uh, a few weeks ago, we would get below 60 for afternoon dew points. So if you were in the shade, it was kind of comfortable. But we're keeping these dew points up into uh, the mid 60s. So by late in the afternoon and even yesterday, we were right around 64, the dew point, which, yeah, it's lower than what it is right now. But still, it it adds to that the heat index and the uncomfortableness of the triple digit temperatures. All right. And around the country, all the activity Activity is way up there to the north. Notice how there's kind of a big clockwise rotation right uh, centered almost on us or just up to the northeast of us. And that's the high, which is keeping things hot and dry around here. And then in the tropics, there is nothing going on. A couple little uh, batches of clouds, but there's nothing raising an eyebrow from the uh, National Hurricane Center, nor even way out in the Atlantic Ocean. So it says for at least the next uh, 48 hours, no development is forecast at all. So go, jumping ahead in time, this is next week. We because between now and then, morning clouds, afternoon sunshine, hot, hot temperatures. However, this long range computer model wanted to, at least in the last run, have a little bit of uh, some precipitation by the middle of next week. So what we're looking at is the high, which as you saw that kind of clockwise rotation on the clouds and the, uh, the precipitation around here right now, that's circling around that high. That stays in place. It, actually strengthens a little bit going into the next few days and the weekend. So temperatures will creep up a degree or two. Uh, the hope being that by early next week, it starts to move off just enough to where we can get a couple of these little disturbances, maybe little waves coming in here off of the Gulf of Mexico, which would hopefully give us a chance for some uh, some rain around here. It's not a great chance, but knock temperatures down a couple of degrees, uh, at least back closer to normal. And like I said, a small chance of rain because between now and then there is nothing out there. 90 at noon, partly cloudy skies, 100 for high temperature today. If you're 
keeping count day number 27 and we'll just keep counting across the board going to be hitting 30 by Friday by Friday. <laughs> yeah, so, you know. we'll, we'll enjoy the 70s in the morning. OK, we'll the eternal that. optimist once again. Yeah, we'll yes, do that. Uh, we should endeavor to be more like this. What do you think? Sure. sure. OK, <laughs> cool. Sure. All right. Thanks. It'll be okay. 650, 78 degrees. And tomorrow on GMSA, summer means it's time for grilling and hosting barbecues. We're going to show you how to make sure your home and yard are ready. Outside with live cam. Yeah, we're uh, going to enjoy 78 degrees while it lasts. Looking right now, now at San Antonio getting its day started on this Tuesday with GMSA. We're back to wrap up the morning show after this. Good morning. Coming up here on GMA, the latest on the deadly July 4th shooting spree in a Chicago suburb. Gunfire as uh, spectators in the holiday parade began. What we are learning about the person of interest arrested in connection with the deadly rampage. And as we hear from witnesses and survivors. Plus, what to expect as millions of Americans return home from the holiday weekend when the chaos at the airport could finally ease and what your rights are if your flight was one of those that was canceled. That and so much more right here on GMA. Right now, 654. Let's check back with Stephen Cavazos. We are in better shape than we are now than we were probably about an hour or so ago. 35 at San Marcos. So let's get a quick look around town. What you can expect for this morning commute as more people are heading back to work. Really not going to see anything much of a slow or any much of a slowdown there. Just a lot more folks out there. But be able to look at we did have a crash that has already cleared here off Loop 410 on the west side of San Antonio. Those southbound lanes at Gulebita Road still seeing a little bit of a slowdown, but it's not too bad. Also, looks like we have a better update over here on the north side where a crash is also cleared in the northbound lanes of 281, not far from Loop 1604. But wide look at the map doesn't really show a whole lot else to talk about. Just a lot of those active construction spots and we'll keep you updated. But for now, things look like they're smooth sailings, Mike. Still plenty of clouds hanging around here this morning and very warm temperatures. We are at 78 right now, 79 Castroville and 78 at Canyon Lake. And then throughout the rest of today, yep, we are going to see another triple digit temperature. This will be day number 27, and we are just going to keep chalking them up all the way through the rest of the week going into the weekend. As a matter of fact, probably heating up a little bit more 102s for Thursday, Friday, and in through the weekend. There is a tiny glimmer of hope coming in here by maybe the middle part of next week, but I mean, it, it's slim at best. Are the tropics pretty calm right now as far as we're concerned, Mike? Nothing. <laughs> Nothing out there at all. Okay. Nothing out there right now. We'll hope for that tiny yeah. Yeah. glimmer of hope yeah. next week. We'll take it. Take Stephen's <laughs> advice. Find a friend with a pool. Yes. Okay. Yes. We will do that. <laughs> More several friends, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> several friends. Thank you, guys. Yes, thank you. Thank you guys for joining us, and we'll see you back here at 9. Good Morning America is coming up next.